Unit 1 is a beauty. Which statement is always true? Okay, numbers. So you gotta remember which ones, what's what's what. So numbers in the reals, there's two types of numbers. There's rational, and then there's irrational. Okay, irrational only has one, one category. They are never ending decimals with no repeated numbers. There's no patterns. They're chaos. And they are pi and all your square roots. Square root of 2, square root of 3. If you try to approximate these with decimals, they're decimals that go on forever with no pattern and they are unpredictable. Okay, rationals has a lot of subcategories. So it starts out with the natural numbers. Natural numbers are 1, 2, 3 to infinity. Then the whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3 to infinity. Then the integers, they are the holes and they're opposite, so it goes both ways. 0, 1, 2 to infinity, and then it goes negative 1, negative 2 to infinity. And then after you introduce the negatives, you can introduce the numbers in between. So 0, fourth, a half, etc. Negatives all the way. So rationals, these are nice numbers. So reals can be either rational or they can be crappy. Okay, now beyond the reals, there are there is the imaginaries, and the imaginary comes from the idea of taking the square root of a negative. And the square root of a negative is the imaginary. But the world of complex complex marries these two together brings these two worlds together so if you take a real number four and you add it with an imaginary that is the definition of complex you got one of each now four times three i that is a real times an imaginary that's twelve i the result is purely imaginary there's no real part it's just imaginary um, but this these are not like terms so they don't combine so you just have four reals and three imaginaries and when you combine those two it's called a complex so if you times two irrationals it will always be irrational and so like an irrational, let's think of the square roots. So if you times square root of 3 times square root of 5, that does end up being 15. Um, or square root of 15, which is irrational, so that's true. But if I take square root of 2 and times it by square root of 18, I can create a square root of 36 and that leaves the world of irrational and turns into a pretty sweet number. So A is not always true. B, the sum of two rationals can be rational or irrational. So two rationals, think of the weirdest rationals. So like one half plus one fourth no matter what happens with addition and subtraction you always stay in that world you're never gonna turn these nice decimals into these crappy decimals so that's that's never true the only way you can leave the world is with times or divide so see the product of a non-zero rational and an irrational is going to be irrational. And this is it right here. So choose any rational number. So if we choose one half and we times it by any square root, it is just like we did earlier. If we take a real and we times it by an imaginary, your answer is just going to be imaginary. So if you take 
a good one and you times it by a bad one, your result is going to be 1 half squared is 2. It's always going to have this irrational part. Okay, number 2. Calculate this. Simplify this expression. You got 3x minus 2 squared. So you have to do 3x minus 2 times itself. 3x minus 2, so you times 3x times 3x, that's 9x squared. <clears throat> 3x times a minus 2 is a minus 6x. Minus 2 times 3x is a minus 6x. And minus 2 times a minus 2 is a plus 4. Add your like terms. So you have 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. And then the next part is subtract whatever this times this is. This guy times this is 9x squared. This guy times this is a minus 27x. This times this is a plus 1x. And this times this is a minus 3. These are like terms. So that's a minus 26x. So you need to take this minus to this, to this, and to this. So if you take the minus to the 9x squared, it's going to be minus 9x squared. Take it to the minus 26x, it's going to be plus 26x. Take it to the minus 3, it's going to be plus 3. And then this and this is nothing. This and this is 14x's and 4 and 3 is 7 ones. Number 3. Use properties of radicals. Here we go. You gotta have positive exponents. Okay, it is a cube root. Bust up 27. 27 is 3 times 9. So 3 times 3 times 3. And because the index is a 3, that means you've got to have a group of 3. And then once you have a group of 3, they may exit. So on the outside, we got 3. Now, x to the minus 3, you got to remember, <coughs> x to the negative 3, if you ever have a negative exponent, you're dividing. So that is really 1 divide x, divide x, divide x. That's 1 divide x cube. So, you have, you got to change it like this. So you got 1 divide x, 1 divide x, 1 divide x, or just 1 on top and x, x, x on bottom. So you have 3 of these groups right here. So that means they will leave. So 1 divide x leaves. And then <coughs> you got y to the 6. So if you got 6 of them and you need to group them into 3s, you can go y, 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 y. That's a group of three. That's a group of three. Total is a group of six. So two of these groups of y's leaves. So that would be y squared on the outside. And that, everything left, nothing stayed in. That is your answer. Number four, multiplication. Two times three is six. Two times an imaginary is two imaginaries. A negative four imaginaries times three is negative twelve imaginaries. And you gotta remember this. The square root of a negative is imaginary, but imaginary times imaginary, that's kinda like this. Um, you can take two imaginaries times them and it creates, it leaves that world and it is a real. It's a negative one. Kinda like the idea that an irrational times an irrational sometimes can leave the world of irrationals and can be a whole number. So it's kind of a weird thing. But with imaginaries, every time you times two imaginaries, they give you a uh, negative one. So negative four times one is a negative four, and i times i is a negative one, and a negative four times a negative one is a positive four. Positive 4 plays with 6, and that's 10. And this plays, and that's a minus 10i, so we're going to go C. What's equivalent to 7 to the 4 raised to the 1 4? 
exponents. So your rules of exponents. If you have x squared times x cubed, it is x2 plus 3. If you have x squared cubed, it is x2 times 3. So that's what we're doing here. Exponent to another level, you times it. 7 fourth times 1 fourth or yeah so I guess I'm getting I'm not even looking at the answers so that's really the same thing as 7 to the 4 fourths and that's really 7 to the 1 which is just 7 and I guess that draws me to C but 7 to the 4 fourths if you have x to the a divide b and you morph that to a radical the x goes here the a goes here the b goes here so this 7 would go there and this 4 would go here and this 4 would go here <coughs> and because the index is 4 they leave in groups of 4 and you got 4 7s so they leave as 1 Number six, which one is equivalent to nine to the one third? Nine to the one third is nine to the one and three. So we're gonna go D. Seven, mark all the box that are the exact same as four to the three halves, okay, times your exponent, so that's going to be 2 times 1 third, that is 2 thirds, and we're looking for 3 halves, so it is not that guy, times these, 3 over 1, that is 3 halves, that's a winner, um, if you morph this, it is 4 to the 2 thirds, that's not a winner, <clears throat> if this is the, you got two of these, so you have really the cube root of four, that's the same as this, so this is going to be the cube root of four times the cube root of four, which is the cube root of sixteen, or four squared, same thing. So morph this, this is four to the two thirds, and we're looking for three halves, so that's no good. 8, I think 8 is good, because if you morph this, 4, and it is going to be a square root, and you got 3 of them, so, <coughs> let's see what we got here. I have 4, 4, 4. And that is 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4. So we really got the square root of 64. And that is 8. So that's good. Okay. This, if you mark this, it is 4 to the 3 halves. So that's a square root. So that one is good. That matches up. Times them. That's going to be 3 halves. That one's good. <coughs> this is the same thing as this one, so that one's good. And if you times your exponents, that's going to be two-thirds. That one's no good. Number eight. Square root of a negative 36. Okay, square root of a negative. That's a big deal. That's imaginary. So take that out. That's imaginary. Square root of 36. Square root of 36 is cool. That is just six. So you have six imaginaries. That's B. Number nine, which one is normal? That is bad. That one is bad. Um, yeesh, I don't know. This one looks bad, but really it might be in disguise. This one might be good because this and man, no, because this guy, check this, it's this one, it's D. Because this one is also in disguise, but it's going to be easier to play with maybe than this guy. So square root of 8, square root of 8 is no good, you got to simplify it. And there's a 
pair of twos you need to pull out. So you got two square roots of two. You <coughs> always try and simplify these. Pair of twos comes out, and two stays in. So that is going to give us a zero. So I think I lied to you. I wonder if I did. Because like, I told you before that in the world of addition and subtraction, that they always stay in the world they are. So we just proved that wrong. So the answer is still right, but in the world of addition and subtraction, I guess you can subtract. So if you have pi subtract pi, an irrational subtract an irrational, that can turn into a good nor a, a good number. So we're talking. Where, where were we talking about that? An addition. This is also the same as addition. You could do pi add a negative pi, and that leaves the world of weirdos and comes to a normal world. But I think zero is the only one that's going to work. You've got to make them equal to zero with addition and subtraction. And you can turn those crappy numbers into good numbers. It's got to subtract itself. Okay. Very good. Now, 10's not ever going to be on a sage. It's pretty tough. But the idea of it's kind of cool. Whoa. Oh, man. Okay, two complex numbers have to add and give you 4, and they got to times and give you 29. Um, so they're going to be conjugates. They've got to add and give you 4. So we're going to go 2 plus 2, and that's going to be our 4. So the conjugate is the same thing except for 1 is a plus, 1 is a minus. And the imaginaries, that's how they add and create a 0 imaginaries. So it is 5 imaginaries and a negative 5 imaginaries. And when you times them, 2 plus 5 imaginaries times 2 minus 5 imaginaries. You do 2 times 2, and that's a 4. 2 times a minus 5i, that's a minus 10i. 5i times 2, that's a plus 10i. And 5i minus 5i, that's a minus 25i square. So these are 0. And this is a minus 1. So that is 4 plus 25, which is 29. So now if you remember, when you times them, the 2 plus the 2 is going to give you the 4. But when you times, 2 times 2 is going to give you 4. So if you take 29, 29, and minus the 4, the other one's got a times to give you 25. And that will give you the hint that it's got to be 5 and 5. Okay, number 11. Gosh, I don't know what's up with this. Which is the standard expression of a complex number? So standard is always the real first and then the complex. So the real is 5, and the imaginary is a minus 3. So you're going to go D. 12. Okay, multiply these two binomials. So if you do kind of a multiplication table like we did in third grade, x times x gives you x squared, x times 5 gives you 5x, a minus 2 times x is a minus 2x, a minus 2 times 5 is a minus 10, and these are like terms, and you can add them together, but if they just want you to fill in the blanks, there you go, find the product, this guy times this guy, this guy times this guy, this guy times this guy, so 54x cubed 
plus 18x squared minus 27x. Now this guy times this guy. I'm going to stack them on top of each other. Minus 36x squared minus 12x plus 18. So I'm going with one of them that has a plus 18. So that one's gone and that one's gone. And then I'm going to go with the one that has 54 cubes. So it's got to be that guy. 14. Okay, on the bottom, you got I, I, I. This is a negative 1. So on the bottom, you got negative I. On top, you got 1 plus I times 1 plus I. That's 1 times 1. 1 times I. Whoa, I times 1. I times I is a minus 1. That kills that. So you got two i's over a negative i. I divide i is 1. So 2 divide a negative 1 is just a negative 2. B. When you are timesing, you add the exponents. So that's like x squared times x3 is x2 add 5. So it's going to be 2 thirds add one half and I'm going to change them both to sixes so I'm going to times this by two over two so that's going to be four sixes and I'm going to times this by one times it by three over three and that is three sixes so it is seven sixths so it's going to be B sixteen Okay, I might skip it. <clears throat> you just times, 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 add them all up, and then add the square to whatever square is, that to that, that to that. So we've done like four of those. 19, okay, this is an excellent one. So here we go. All right, now, this two-thirds needs to be taken to each factor in the parentheses, so it's going to be minus 27 to the two-thirds times a to the six times two-thirds and on bottom it's going to be eight to the two-thirds times b cubed times two-thirds so now check it out your A's and your B's, <clears throat> this is going to be 12 thirds, which is just A to the 4. And B, it's going to be 6 thirds, which is just B squared. So I'm either digging B or C, so that's gone and that's gone. Now your numbers. A minus 27 to the 2 thirds. So a minus 27... To the two thirds. So here we go. I've got two of these minus 27s and 27. <clears throat> so I can go like this a minus 27 and a minus 27. Ooh. That's tricky. That is way tricky. So I know a 27 <clears throat> is a 3, 3, 3. And this guy is a 3, 3, 3. And I'm not really worried about the negatives. <coughs> because it's a cube root. So for example, if I have the cube root of a minus 27, that could be... I can times three things to get create a negative. So I know the cube root of 27 is 3 because there are three threes in a 27. So the cube root of 27 is 3, but a cube root of a minus 27 does exist and it's negative. Because a negative 3 times a negative 3 times a negative 3 
is, that's a positive 9, but a positive 9 times a negative 3 is a negative 27. So as long as your index is odd, you can totally create negative numbers. It's only when it's even that you must enter the world of imaginaries. So here we go. I got the cube root of a negative 27. So that on the outside is a negative 3. And I got the cube root of a negative 27, and that is a negative 3. So if you bring out a negative 3 and a negative 3, that is a positive 9 which takes me to B. 18. Okay, this one's good. 3i times 10 is 30i. 3i times a minus 6i is a minus 18i squared. So it's really 30i plus 18, because that's a negative 1. Okay, take this negative out so it's going to be minus imaginary and square root of 16 is just 4 so you really got 7 minus 3i minus 4i so you really got 7 minus 7i plus this business right here so the 7 and the 18 adding give you 25 and your imaginaries 30 take away 7 it's 23 imaginaries Okay. Okay, this is awesome. <clears throat> the square root of eight to the one third is gonna match which one of these? Okay, so this is radical. I'm gonna morph it. That's really eight to the one half raised to the one third. And if you're two levels, you times them. So one half times one third is one six. So that's the same as eight to the one sixth. Now morph it back. The 6 goes here, the 8 goes here, the 1 goes here. So it's B. And. Whoa. That looks like a mess. Okay, same concept though. I'm going to change it to this. So that's 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 1 third. And that is just like x squared times x3. Property is x2 plus 3. So the rule says you got to plus them. So, this is going to be 2 to the 1 half plus 1 third. And we're going to change it to 2. Change them to 6's. <clears throat> 3 6 plus 2 6. And 3 6 plus 2 6 is. This is going to be 2 to the 5 6. Okay. Now this business <clears throat> is going to be minus 3 so I'm going to take this minus with the 3 that's a negative 3 times 2 to the 1 6 times 2 to the 2 thirds okay so I'm going to do 1 6 plus two-thirds. I'm going to change these to sixes, so that's going to be four-sixths. So my two is going to be a negative three times two to the five-sixths. So here's what I got. I have got two to the five-sixths minus three times 2 to the 5, 6. Du, 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 du. So, freak, which one of these is that going to be? <coughs> it is going to be... Ooh, A is looking pretty scary. Oh my gosh. I don't even know, man. <clears throat> this is a pretty grisly question. Oh, so, if you look at it and get frustrated, I should have thought of this. This is a slick way. You can just type this in your calculator and hit enter and see which decimal it gives you. And then match that decimal with A, B, C, or D. So, 
Well, this is the answer. It's D. How come it's D? Hmm, I don't know. That's nasty. <clears throat> so, sorry. <laughs>